this is the real deal. I could have spent the entire show on this game. Seattle, St. Louis, the sequel. Part two. Who gets the silver medal in the XFL North? And a third crack at the D.C. Defenders. Well, just seven short weeks ago, these teams squared off under the lights in Seattle. Donnie Hegman sending a 44-yard dagger through the hearts of Seattle fans. And now with both teams being swept by D.C., this is a real chance for the Battle Hawks to clinch a home playoff berth and for Seattle to stay alive and hope they can get some help with the tiebreakers in Week 10. Much like we told you, the D.C.-Seattle game was going to be entirely different from Week 1 as it was in Week 8 the last time out. This is also going to be a very different ball game from the 20 to 18 game we saw in week two. Both offenses have really found their groove. Even with the game off, AJ McCarron, the runner up to Ben DiNucci in passing, which is impressive to me, took a whole game off and he's still second in the league in passing yards. Um, DiNucci trails McCarron with two less passing touchdowns, but here's the difference. In the interception column, it's not close. Double-digit picks, now 10 for Ben DiNucci, 4 for A.J. McCarron. That is the difference between 6-2 and two and 5-3. and three. We shall see. So many things to love about this matchup, guys, even outside of the playoff picture that we just broke down to you. Did you know you are getting the number one passing offense in the Seattle Sea Dragons and June Jones against the number one pass defense with Donnie Abraham and his brother Devin in St. Louis? Incredible matchup here. A treat to see. Anthony Beck explaining to us in the presser, he had a lot of guys that were banged up in the secondary. And I was impressed with what they did against Vegas. Uh, Tim Harris was inactive. They had a couple of safeties that came out during the game. McClendon was only 13 to 23 for 159. Had a touchdown pass against them, but they didn't pick him off. And, and of course, they didn't really play well against the run. The run defense has not been the strength for St. Louis this season. And I'm not sure how that applies to Seattle, who, who doesn't run the ball a lot, but it's weird, right, to see a successful team for as good as St. Louis has been against teams outside of the defenders, how lousy their run defense has been. And I'm, maybe that's overinflated a little bit, and I thought that was the case because D.C. runs the ball so much more than any other team. But Vegas racked up 208 on the ground. So if you're June Jones, maybe you implement some run scheme here. Um, I don't know. This is such a tough one. I don't think you're going to be able to stop the Seattle run and shoot in a way where you're going to be able to hold them to 18 points. 18 points the last game. They had two offensive touchdowns. Danucci had under 200 yards passing. It's going to be tough to do. You saw what they just did against the D.C. defense. Obviously, a lot of what I'm saying trending towards the over, right? Well, St. Louis is 3-5 and five to the over. Don't get too caught up in that. I think more what you want to look at if you're betting this game is the pace of play. Zook and I were talking a little bit before the show about the San Antonio Brahmas, and we mentioned it, how they muck it up, they make it ugly, they, they keep it a low-scoring game, give themselves a chance at the end. It's the opposite with Seattle. They're going to go up and down, big explosive plays, they're going to make you outscore them, right? And that is where this game is trending. I don't think St. Louis is going to be in their comfort zone very much. Uh, with a team in Seattle that is six and two against the over. So I, I could see a, a 34, 28, 34, 31 style ball game here. I think the most important thing in this 60 minutes of football and potentially overtime it would be back to back weeks. If they did that in the dome is who gets the ball last because we see both these quarterbacks able to put together late game drives. Ben Danucci just did it to scare DC. The defense couldn't hold when Chris Blair had that 70-yard touchdown, but Danucci was balling out 18 points in the fourth quarter, which is as many as they scored against St. Louis in the, in the first game. And A.J. McCarron has been excellent in the two-minute drill down the stretch. They've won more games in the fourth quarter coming back than anybody. So, going to be really tough here. A little bit of a chess match. Um, these quarterbacks definitely want to outplay each other and ultimately win MVP. They're the top two candidates right now. Think about all the playmakers in this game outside of McCarron and Danucci. Josh Gordon, Jacor Pearson, Akeem Butler, Darius Shepard. It, it goes on and on. You got Philip Lindsay against Brian Hill. Those are two guys who were NFL starting running backs at one point in their careers back in 2017 and 18. So two teams trying to find their identity back in week two. They now have clearly found it for Seattle. Big explosive plays. Let Danucci fly downfield. And for St. Louis, 
it's AJ McCarron working with Bruce Gradkowski and, and their pre-snap procedure is just so fascinating to watch. I hope Greg McElroy is calling this game. Drop a comment in the chat. If you know who's on the call, I hope it's McElroy. Um, Long methodical drives kind of get defenses off balance, and that's what St. Louis has been doing very well, mixing a little bit of Brian Hill in with that pass scheme. They got great receivers. Obviously, I think it's 1A and 1B um, with Seattle and St. Louis as far as the deepest receiving core. I think DC can make a case with Chris Blair and Lucky Jackson as far as the top two. But from top to bottom, man, Seattle can go to anybody, and they have all season. St. Louis has showed that as well. When Austin Prohl is like your wide receiver four or five, you're damn good in that in that room for Ricky Prohl, his dad. Guys, we're in for a dandy. This is the old school. Jim Hazlitt, June Jones, Ron Zook, over 100 years of coaching experience combined against the new school. Anthony Becht, first-time head coach. Bruce Gradkowski, young offensive coordinator. It was not that long ago that he was in the NFL himself. And Donnie Abraham, who grinded his way through the high school ranks and all the way up to the XFL. Never even wanted to be a coach originally. He just wanted to play. He becomes a coach. He's had a hell of a job with that defense. But to break your heart, Zook, I'm going with the St. Louis Battlehawks. In a game this close, I look for one thing. Two things. One more important than the other. Who has the ball last? And who's at home? Dome field advantage. For St. Louis here. It is tough to hear. I witnessed it in person. It is tough to hear. And I know June Jones simplifies his playbook, but Ben DiNucci struggled in DC when they had that raucous atmosphere week one. Add 20,000 more crazy people on top of that crowd. What are you going to get? Seattle win. Seattle wins. No well, question. Well, make your case. What? What, what is it about the Sea Dragons that you are so confident? Because we were talking before the show. You're throwing some crazy ideas out at me. Yeah, I think, I think they're going to blow them out. Blow out. We have a bold prediction from Chris Zook. Seattle's going to blow St. Louis out. Oh, I can't wait. All right, so here's what I think. I think <laughs> that the offense is going to spread them out. And Danucci's going to use his wheels. And Philip Lindsay. They're going to run the ball early. And they're going to have to. They're going to they're gonna bring a couple people into that box to try to stop it. They're going to have to spy Danucci, and then he's going to shred them in the second half. Hey, if the, if the Seattle pass offense is good enough, which it may be, it is to go against a number one pass defense that has been excellent in the secondary, has battled through injuries, it hasn't mattered, it's been next man up. If they're able to do that, they should probably be the playoff team. And I know we're going to have the tiebreaker scenario, but if, if, if what happens is cl- anywhere close to what you're saying, where Danucci has a 300, 350 yard game, takes care of the ball, throws a couple of touchdowns, that to me is more impressive going on the road to St. Louis than that kind of ugly game back in week two where it really could have gone either way. I have to give St. Louis credit for that win. It was a huge win and it gave them the confidence they needed to be six and two. At this point, I feel like the first but, couple of weeks are hard to judge teams. They were just getting acclimated to each other. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of moving parts. And it, it really took s- Seattle quite some time to get going. Right. Um, yeah, they had the five game win. So streak. unfortunately, they did score off with D.C. and St. Louis in the first two weeks. Right. Um, but they've put a great product on the field since. And I do. I just I feel like that the tie breaking rules are going to change things, and I, I really hope that uh, June does run the ball to open up that yeah. throwing lane. Very Because they do. They have, they have five wide receivers that can gash Yeah, him. and St. Louis has not been good against the run. And I was never more shocked than Vegas running for 200 yards. It's a team that struggled to get 20 or 30, and they were running the ball at will. Jalen McClendon had a truck lane every time he took off to run the ball, and like you said, Ben DiNucci doesn't get enough credit for as mobile as he is. He'll find those lanes. Right. And he'll he'll run for twenty yards, and he's learning more how to slide. He might look back so, at you and say, "You ain't catching you me." You ain't catching me. Yeah, I I was shocked that this line was won simply because the home advantage for St. Louis. Usually, you think that'd be worth a couple points. Mikey Manziel certainly thinks it is. 
He's going with his favorite guy, AJ McCarron. He just learned to fade me over the past. He 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 went for, he jumped ship. He faded you, and now he fades me. 